Hey, this is a uh, 2009 Ford Taurus. Um, we're going to have to replace the alternator on this. So I did a video on how to troubleshoot to get to this point. Um, but at this point, just shooting a video on how to replace it. Some tough camera angles, but I'm going to try to do the best I can. So first thing you want to do is, you know, disconnect positive, negative. I'm just being safe. Um, down here, you're going to notice this is your battery B plus, so your alternator. This is a 13 millimeter. We're going to pull that off. This connector here, this is 102A. This is the one that, you know, if you we were if you're watching my troubleshooting video, you'll see that. Um, we're gonna pull this tab, this will pull out. Be careful, there's a rubber grommet in there. Um, but hell why we're here. Why don't we just get that out now and I'll kind of show you that rubber grommet. Wanna be careful it doesn't fall out. That rubber seal is buried in there. We're gonna have to pull that out after when we put the new alternator in, because that seals out moisture. So there's a couple guys I've seen online say you have to remove the uh, coolant line. I'm going to try doing it without it. If I have to remove it, I'll remove it, but I'm going to try doing it without it. So I'm going to pop this and I'm going to come over here. And what we need to do next, see if we can get some lighting in here for you. Using a serpentine belt tool um, or, you know, three eighths ratchet. I think, I think there's a three eighths on there right now. Um, you're going to rotate this thing counterclockwise. So Basically what you're doing is going in that direction and see if I can get some light down there for you. By doing that, you'll see that the tension on the belt, actually clockwise, my mistake. If you go clockwise, you'll see that it puts some slack on the belt down in there. Man, this is a really tough angle for you, sorry. But trust me, put some slack That'll give us a chance to pull the alternator out. So, from what I can tell, it looks like there's two bolts. I'm just gonna zoom in on it if I can. First one's right there. And that's a 15. Again, right there. And there's another one buried in there. Um, <laughs> can't see it from here, can't see it from underneath. So I'm gonna have to get my hands in there and then I'll show you what it looks like when I get it out, okay? All right. See if we can get this ratchet in there. Uh, we might have to go smaller, but we'll see. Of course, it would help if we had the uh, right socket. So this one's a 13 millimeter. You can get a shallow. Now I see where they say, I want you to take off the coolant lines. Might be a little bit easier. Yeah, so we need a deep socket on that 13. Give me a second. Okay, so I got my 13 down there. I'm just trying to loosen this up now. Probably could use an extension. Okay, got that nut off. I don't know if there's a backing washer on this or not. I don't want to be really careful. Okay, so those two are disconnected. I'm just gonna put this off to the side for now. I'm just gonna slap this nut back on there, just in case. Get that wire from my oxygen sensor out of the way. I don't want to be replacing that too. All right, so my next step is removing the serpentine belt. But I'm going to try to do this where I don't take it all the way off. See if we can get you a good angle. Give me a second. Okay, so just so you can see this. Here's my three eighths. This goes down and it's gonna go into the hole for my tensioner. Just wanna make sure that's seated. And then when I move it, you can see the belt moving. So my tripod's in the way, but let's see if we can somehow get my hand in here. Yeah, not gonna happen. So gotta move the tripod. 
Okay, because I don't have a good throw to be able to pull it back far enough to get the belt off, I actually have to use an extension that comes with this tool. So instead of the tool being straight like this, I actually put an adapter, goes from half inch to three eighths because they have an adapter. And then what I did was I just moved it to give me a different angle. So this should give me enough throw when I install it on my tensioner to remove the belt. And you want to be careful with your fingers when you do this. So when I pull this back, it'll create some slack in the belt down below. And all I want to do is, yeah, great. All I want to do is disconnect it from the alternator. I don't want to, if I can help it, disconnect it from anything else. Okay. And it'll probably fall off and I'll have to redo the whole thing, but it's off now. So now I can start to remove the alternator. Okay, so the next one I'm going after is this nut, and that's the 15 that I was talking about. Um, tough camera angle. I'm gonna see if I can just wedge my camera here for you. Give me one second, we'll do what you think. do is I'm not going to take this one all the way out just yet because I got to try and find the one that's way down below. My glove's taking one for the team. Okay, so that's loose enough. I'm going to try and get the bottom one. I'm not going to film it because there's really no way for me to do it, but when I get it out, I'll show you where it is on the alternator. All right, so here's my 15 mil from way underneath and behind. Um, that one came out. So the next one, you have to take the nut off of that stud right there, that one. And then you're gonna use a seven millimeter. I got a quarter inch seven mil that's gonna fit over that. Um, let me just get that in there for you. And then what I'm gonna do is remove that stud, okay? So we'll do that next and we'll be right back. So as you can see, I backed that stud out. Um, but one thing you wanna be careful of is this stud is actually holding the alternator in sorry about the focus it's holding the alternator in so to get that out of there and just so you know it's really tough to get a camera in here or else i'd be filming this for you sorry um i'm going to try and hold the alternator with one hand and then basically get that bolt out and then be really careful with my harnesses over here and then see if i can wedge it through here we'll see how that goes okay so we definitely have to remove the radiator hose that's what this is here and you know, this right here is an eight millimeter. I just backed it up because it's full of coolant. Yeah, we get splashed a little bit down there, but it got plugged off. I'm gonna try and get the alternator through here now. It should fit in this gap. Um, we'll see what happens, but I'll come back and we'll get to the next step. All right, so now that we got the new alternator, let's show you how this goes. So this is that long 15, basically threads through. And then you get a backing nut on the other side. You've got that shorty stubbier stud. This is that eight millimeter or seven. I think it was an eight, could be wrong. That's gonna thread in. And if we come down here, notice these two uh, ears. That's what I'm gonna call them. If you look in there, you can actually see right there this is where one ear goes and the other side is the other ear. And then we'll sit in there, we'll get the belt across, um, but that's what we're gonna do next. Again, I had to take off the radiator hose to get in here. Um, you'll see, you can get it through there. It's a little tough, but you can get it through there. Uh, once I get it in there, then we'll mount it up. And if there's some good camera angles, I'll show them. If not, I just wanted to show you, that's how we're gonna drop it in, kind of like this, just like this, okay? All right, so. You can see we got her in. Um, really tough to see, but the serpentine belt's on now. Um, 
it seemed to go okay. I had to hit the bottom pulley first and then bring it up over the top for the alternator and then it seemed to go pretty well. You're gonna need a shallow ratchet um, to get that long 15 millimeter in there. Um, but it went in for me. I had a little, um, a little bit of struggles with the top stud here. Sorry with the lighting, but this stud right there. Um, I had to work it back and forth. Maybe this, I don't know, maybe the threads got dorked a little bit. Tried to run a tap through, but it wasn't going all that well. So I just, I just used the stud and, you know, re-threaded the hole with the stud and, and it went. So everything's torqued down. Um, I've got my harnesses connected. You can see is my C. So for those of you who've been following along with my troubleshooting video, you know, 102A and then 102B and then remounted my radiator hose here with the clamp. That was a eight millimeter, I believe. Um, so now that everything's back up and running, a couple things I need to do. My terminals are looking pretty, yeah, pretty nasty. So we're gonna clean those off next. And then what we'll do is we'll set up our voltmeter and uh, we'll confirm our, confirm our repair and see if this works for us. All right, for those of you who've never cleaned battery terminals, you can pick up tools like this. So one end we'll clean in here. The other, same thing, we clean in here. These I've already kind of cleaned. They don't look like it, but they are. Um, and then on the opposite side, we've got a brush in there that will fit right over the top. We'll just clean that up. I got a rag. To get rid of some of the gross acid that's kind of sitting here. And this already has some anti-seize on it, believe it or not. Um, you can use any kind of grease. I've used Vaseline. Some say dielectric grease. I've never tried that. I usually just use anti-seize and it's always worked for me. So let's clean off my connection there. Once I've done that, I'll get a little bit of anti-seize on here. Not too much. This stuff, this stuff goes a long way. That makes a big fat mess. So we just lube it up, lube it up. Put it on our ground. Put it on our positive. And then we're gonna tighten, tighten our bolts down. Be careful when you do this. So on the ground side, not really a concern. I don't want to torque or twist or anything like that. I want to keep good pressure going this way while I'm twisting. I don't want to pull on it because I don't want to break the post. Come over here. This is where you want to be careful. You do not want to ground this ratchet out to anything because you're connected to the 12 volts. If you do that, you're going to have a welding experience. Trust me how, and ask me how I know that. I did it with a screwdriver once. All right, so those are connected. We're gonna leave this off, get our voltmeters and start doing our testing and see if our repair is gonna work for us. Okay, here we go. So battery voltage is 12 right now. It's low because the battery needs to be charged. I've got some pits set up just to monitor and see what's going on. I've already cleared the codes. I'm guessing these things that are telling me there's a fault and there's something low, it's just because I haven't run the vehicle and gone through the drive cycle. So let's fire it up. Fingers crossed that this thing goes up to 13 or 14. Well, that's good news. So right where we want to be. 14.3. Like I said, I'm guessing with these kids, I'm going to have to go through a drive cycle and see what we can get. But for now, you know, if this video helped you, and there's a couple of them, one how to replace the alternator, and then you know this one here that we're trying to do a troubleshoot, replace, and then confirm our repair. Uh, everything seems to be going okay. You know, like, one thing I didn't mention is make sure that your serpentine belt is installed correctly. 
um, on all the pulleys. You definitely don't want that bolt coming off. If this video helped you, hey, give me a subscribe, give me a like. Um, and if it didn't, or hey, I could do something better, I'm definitely open to that. So for now, you guys have a great one. We'll talk again.